great to be back home, and it's great to be with a bunch of my fellow attorneys. And I want to begin by thanking Mary and the Federal Bar and also uh, Chief Judge Burgess for holding this event and for all of you who are attending. We were hoping for a great turnout, and I, and I, uh, I, I think we've achieved that uh, goal. Um, I wanted to just spend a few minutes talking about how this um, bill, the Power Act, came to be and what we hope to achieve today. So uh, 10 years ago, when I was your Attorney General and um, working with many of you, I was uh, honored to lead what was then called the Governor's Rural Subcabinet. And I traveled to a number of our communities with other cabinet members uh, in, the, in the state government. And I will tell you, and it's a little hard to talk about, but I'll do it anyways. Um, in one of these meetings, it was in a community in one of our rural communities. I, early on in this process, I had a meeting with the superintendent of one of the schools and uh, as part of the rural sub-cabinet. Uh, and he was talking about the biggest challenge in his district, and he wasn't talking about education. He was talking about the challenges that we have, unfortunately, in our state and in the country with the problems of sexual assault and domestic violence. And he told me that uh, one of his top students had called him that morning. She had a big test that she was taking and she said she couldn't take it. This is a young teenage girl because she had been sexually assaulted the night before. And, um, you know, we have a problem with this challenge in our state, certainly, but there was something about this particular story that uh, really broke my heart and steeled my resolve to work with everybody together in our state to try to do everything we could to stop this. That was literally the spark that began this idea of the Choose Respect initiative that many were part of, that our legislature was part of, our governor was leading. Um, you know, soon there were posters being taped to school walls, marches. People began to talk more openly about this big problem in our state. And importantly, a whole host of lawyers, including many in this room, began to provide services, legal services, pro bono legal services, to victims and survivors free of charge through a series of what we called back then pro bono legal summits. And I know, again, some of you were part of that throughout the state. And it was really inspiring because when you looked at what happened, through the bar and others who were working so hard on this, literally there was thousands and thousands of hours provided to survivors of these heinous crimes because of uh, the generosity of our legal community. So when I arrived in the Senate, one of the first bills that I introduced was modeled on this effort. It was, uh, as Mary stated, the bill was called the Pro Bono Work to Empower and Represent Act, or the Power Act. I've learned in the Senate, if you can give a, a cool acronym to a bill, a lot of times it'll move faster. So this was the Power Act. And uh, we got it actually through the Senate in the first term in November of uh, 2015, but this had been hung up in the House for three years, believe it or not. Uh, but it uh, eventually became law, and the battle was worth every minute to get it um, passed. And as many of you know, the reason this is so important, studies show that when an abused victim is represented by an attorney, their ability to break out of the cycle of violence that they often find themselves in increases dramatically. And we all know there's no panacea for the complex problems of the challenges we have with regard to sexual abuse in Alaska, but this is clearly one of the things that really, really matters. I'll give you one example. One study found that 83% of victims represented by attorney were able to obtain a protective order compared to just barely 30% uh, of victims who didn't have an attorney. 
The problem, of course, is that thousands, it's literally tens of thousands, of survivors from these crimes go without legal assistance each year. And my hope is that the POWER Act, which we're doing here this event today, thanks to the chief, will create an army of lawyers, literally thousands across the country to help break the cycle of abuse. And under the bill, each federal judicial district in America is now required to hold one of these events each year. And that's already started to happen. The Ninth Circuit uh, is starting to do that, the DC Circuit. But we're hopeful today that with this event, Alaska can be a model for other, other districts across the country to do this. So today you'll be hearing from Michaela Sparks, a survivor, and her lawyer, John Katchen, who worked with me and is a great attorney here in our state when I was attorney general and was very involved in crafting this entire initiative. And we'll hear from Christine Pate, the legal director for the Alaska Network on Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault. I want to talk a little bit about Christine. She was a cum laude graduate of the New York University School of Law. She came to Alaska in 1993 clerk for Sitka Superior Court Judge Larry Zervas, and after that she worked at Alaska Legal Services and Fairbanks, and then has been with the network for more than 20 years, doing this great work for our state. Her demeanor was once described by a reporter as Clark Kent-like, which I would agree with, if that means she has superpowers that are used to fight bad guys and help the good guys. And last year, I had the opportunity to speak about Christine and her partner in crime, or maybe partner in preventing crime, Nicole Nelson, who I know is here, about all the good work that they have done on, the, on a speech I gave on the Senate floor as part of my, what we call our Alaskan of the Week series of speeches, where we highlight Alaskans who are doing great work. And she is directing the statewide civil legal services program. She does a phenomenal job. This is all working together to, again, try to create what we've done before, which is volunteers to help on one of the most pernicious, difficult challenges we have in Alaska and America. So now I'm gonna let those on the front lines to, to actually describe this in a lot more detail. So please let's welcome uh, Christine to the, to the uh, podium here. Thank you very much. <laughs> 